And finally, the main event of the show, Finn Balor, Kyle O'Reilly for the NXT title. As far as professional wrestling, like these guys just blew everybody away, I thought. They were so great. And the story of the match, which actually we don't know the end of the story yet because he's getting an x-ray. At some point in this match, Kyle O'Reilly, I think it was a knee. He hits a knee and that's the end of Finn Balor's jaw. And they wrestled for a little bit longer, but it was it was very clear by the way they did the finish. I mean, the finish, it felt like it came out of nowhere, basically. Finn called for them to go they home early. Hour in, though. It was a long match. It wasn't like... Yeah, I don't know how long it was supposed to go, but... I mean, basically, at the finish, Finn... Finn is a double foot stomp. Kyle is a German. Finn jumps up and hits another double foot stomp. And then he just climbs to the top and it's the coup de grace and wins. And there was no back and forth. There was no counter. There was no nothing. And in a match that it had one counter after another, it was just weird. And Hunter noted in the press conference afterwards that Finn Balor was on his way to the hospital for an x-ray of his jaw. So obviously his jaw was messed up. Kyle O'Reilly's face was also all busted up. So they said he was being he's, medically he's being examined as well. Too. Yeah. But, I mean, just a great match. They did wrestling early, great chain wrestling. Kyle O'Reilly, all sorts of great submissions out of nowhere. Uh, 1916 and such by by Finn Balor. I just thought this match was fantastic. And when it was over, Balor helps Kyle up. They shake hands. And then Kyle looks outside, and there's Ridge Holland with Adam Cole's body over his shoulder. And he throws him over the barricade. And leaves him for dead. Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish run out, and they're all concerned, and they're yelling for help. And that's how the show went off the air. And why were Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and Kyla, and uh, and uh, Roderick Strong, shouldn't they have been watching this match together? Yes. But if they were going to so, do, do an angle where, where Ridge Holland beat up Adam Cole, you couldn't have Bobby Fish and um, Roderick Strong wouldn't, because that would make no sense at all. Well, that's my point. That's why I think that Roderick Strong. You might be overthink. You might be overthinking. I I it's don't possible. think so. It's possible. We'll I mean, see. It's, I mean, it's possible that they do a split up where those guys go with Rich Holland and try to get Rich Holland over. I suppose, but um, yeah, I you know whatever it's possible. Dude, the three of those together and Rich Holland can do tag matches with either Fish or Roderick Strong against Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. I mean, if Rich Holland is going to be great, that's how you're going to make the guy great. That program? Mm hmm So I guess we'll see, but... That's how she went off the air. I thought it was a great show. Much better than the last takeover. And, uh... It's better, yeah. I didn't yeah. think it was one of the best takeovers, but I, I enjoyed it from start to finish. Um, I, but I thought there was only, like, one... Like, the, the matches were good, but there was only one great match, which was the main event. And, um... You know, there have been takeovers where almost every match is great. Uh, this one was, this was just like, the, yeah, it was a really good show. Um, and, and uh, you know, the main event was exactly, I mean, I expected a great match. It was exactly, um, I, I, I don't, you know, I almost, actually, I, I probably expected a slightly better match, but that's probably so unfair cause I, on my part to do that. But. You know, it was basically what I... Well, dude, it, it probably I mean, could have been a better match had someone not had his jaw injured and, and called no to go kidding. home early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably built to a better finish, and I don't know how many minutes they had to shave off. I mean, it was very clear from the start they were going to do a very long match, which they did. I mean, they were... I think it was between 28 and 29 minutes. And... Um, but, yeah, it was a it was a, a, a great, great match. Uh, one of the better... Dude, they started an hour better, and 45 minutes there. into the show. Uh, that's when this match started. It was like it, uh, um, what would it have been? Hour and 45 minutes in. And, you know, usually these shows go two and a half, two hours, 45 minutes. So I actually, when this match started, was wondering if they were going to go to a one-hour draw. So did I. At the first, in the first, not not when it started, but I would say about 10 minutes in, I did have that thought in my mind, they may be going 60, but... Um, yeah, I, I definitely did have that thought in my mind, but it was 20, it was 28 and a half. And, and you know what? It didn't need to go longer than that. 60 might've been, I mean, it might've been impressive in a way, 
I mean, you know what? I, mean, I, I don't want to say. You know, they may have been able to have a hell of a sixty-minute match. I don't want to say that they couldn't. Um, it's but sixty is very, very difficult. But they were they were doing an, a great, great job. I mean, so it's not um, it's not unfathomable. Um, I don't think that they were going to do sixty only because I would think that if it was going to be a draw, they'd have gotten out of it without a pin. They'd have done a different done it in a different way. I think that Balor was. I think that when Balor wanted to go home, you know, I think that Balor was going to win. It may, it may have been, you know, five more minutes or something, but because um, they were, they were in those last couple of minutes. I it, it didn't feel to me like they were. They got another half hour left uh, in them the way that pacing was going. But not that they couldn't do it. I know they can do it, but just felt like they were building to a a finish, but they weren't quite there yet.